Sunrow MMA, here we are at the Forum, Kentish Town, London, at Cage Warrior 69. And we're fortunate enough to be joined by, uh, it's not an over, overstatement to say, an icon in the sport, Little Evil, Jens Palver. Jens, thanks very much for taking the time. Uh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. The first thing I have to ask is, I know last weekend you suffered a pretty brutal TKO loss. Um, yeah, I, I know you were fighting someone who was 6-0 in heart surgeries. Oh my God! And uh, you know, you know that 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 you know we've seen that fight. It must have been something that was very important to you. He was your nephew, and for those people who haven't seen that Fox News clip, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it was one of those. I wanted it to go viral a little bit, and uh, you know, my nephew was one one heart valve is actually the tube is made out of Gore-Tex. He's been going through heart surgeries literally from the day he was born. He really wasn't supposed to make it out of the hospital. He's literally a miracle, and he's almost 10 years old. And I think one of the hard parts has always been is, you know, watching him battle. He's scared to go into the knife. He's, you know, every time he's afraid, and we're afraid, may not see Omar again. And it's, without telling him, it's kind of like, hey, you know you're supposed to be sick. Hey, I want to tell everybody what it is, but I don't want everybody, you know, I don't want him to know. So it's kind of that, I don't know what the, you know, but... He wanted to fight an MMA bout, and the irony is, where I, that's where I first learned how to wrestle, was Tillamook, Oregon. So, my coach, Jack Van Tress, my mother is born, raised, lived there um, my whole life. So, to be able to go back there, and they are all about it, hey, let's bring him back here. But he got to go in the back, he got to train, warm up, got to do the fight. He always wanted to be a fighter, and, you know, I figured you might as well have a, we'll get you a good opponent. Yeah. But it was funny, because I told him, I said, hey, you have to weigh at least 50 pounds. What? I go, if you're under 50 pounds, we can't do this. So he got on there with all his clothes. He weighed 55 at weigh-ins. I said, okay, we're good. So it meant the world to me to be able to give back to my nephew. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I started fighting in the very beginning was to give my family and, you know, my, my mother, my brothers, give us something else to talk about other than how we grew up, where we came from, the negative. My family can have something that they can point at and go, we have, you know, this is where we come from. We're this side of the Pumas. So for Omar to go out there, and the one thing I didn't know was when they whipped out the belt, that even caught me off guard. If you can see Omar's face when he sees that, and to me, I, yeah, I was crying the whole time, but I was blubbering. I was blubbering. It meant the world to be able to do that for him. Is there a charity that, you know, certainly back overseas in the States that people can get involved with that would, you know, is there anything kicking around for that kind of condition? No, that's the thing is I don't really know. There's not much about it. When I say, I mean, again, you have to talk to my mother or my sister. They know about the, uh, literally the backwards baby. I mean, his kidneys, his livers, everything's on opposite sides. So it's, it was just, he's an anomaly from day one. And... I don't know the whole gist of it all, you know, but no, no, no charities that I know of, but it's just something, hey, he's my nephew. He wanted to fight, so let's throw him on a cage, and then, you know, they had the video, and we're just trying to let people, you know, just want people to see it, just trying to build his story. Uh, far be it for me to push another website, but it is on Fox News, Sport, Fox Sports News. The clip is stunning, and you honestly can't tell who's happier at the end, you or him. Yeah. It's a beautiful moment. Yeah, no, and it's, again, to be able to do that for him, to be able to do that for my family, my grandma, my mom, my aunts, everybody was in there, they were teary-eyed. But to be able, and to be able to do that in Oregon where I'm, you know, I'm semi-from because I've got Seattle for yeah. six months, Oregon for six months. I've been back and forth, so I don't know what I, I'm a Wash Oregon guy. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to call myself. I'm a carny, really. Now, you, you, you mentioned in a past answer that, you know, you started back in the day. To, to sort of help your family raise the profile. It's fair to say that, you, you, again, I mean, it's going to sound like I'm kissing ass, but, you know, for the smaller weight classes, you know, you're one of the guys that helped bring it, put it on the mat. You know, you're one of the guys, certainly to a Western audience, the Americas, yeah. the lightweights. Do you have, is there any tinge of, any tinge of sort of, I wish it was 10 years, I wish I was 10 years younger, because you'd be fighting probably bantamweight, flyweight, not, you know, out of your weight class. Is there any ever? Is there any sort of regret or remorse that you have? Happy that you set the trend? Uh, you know, I mean, no. I mean, you see every, you see it now. You see the money and you know and things like oh, if only. But the reality is, somebody had to do it. Somebody had to pioneer it. Somebody had to build it. It had to start somewhere. And again, no, you know, I'm I'm real thankful. I'm real thankful for 
the original SCG guys, of course, Monty Cox, my manager, to getting me into. But I'm very, very thankful for Dana, Lorenzo, and Frank Fertitta. When they bought this, they took it to a whole new level. You know, and it's just been, to me, to see that, to know that I was a part of it, even, you know what, it's better to have been a part of it than not have been, you know, not at all. So, there's always ways around it. I guess you look at it, they're always making more money a year from now, two years from now. So, you just got to take with what you have, what you've gone through, what you've been through, and be thankful that you had the opportunity. You know, it's, you know, fighters tend to be quite humble, and, you know, one of the things that's not just USC for you, you, you know, it was your name uh, with a few others that helped la launch Pride Bushido, and, you know, those weight classes there. You know, what... What would you like your legacy in the sport to be? Because quite honestly, there's a lot of choice out there. Yeah, it's, um, no, I'm the godfather of the lightweight divisions. I'm the godfather of the lightweights. That's what you give an old man. That's the respect that you pay. So I always tell people, I'm the godfather of the lightweight divisions. Because I always said, I never want, I never want somebody to say they're too small to be an MMA fighter. The sport's too beautiful. It's way too, I mean, I don't want anybody to say they're too small to be a fighter. And... To me, Godfather of the lightweight division works just fine. You know, it's with some of the younger up-and-comers, perhaps not on the USC sort of top five yet, but who do you like in, 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 you know, as a potential superstar in the future? You know, I've always been, I still remember when Joe Seattle first came out in Sacramento, Jens, you know, I had a 25-minute fight with Faber. You know, I go, oh, I'd fight anybody. You know, I'll fight all the time. Whoever they put in front of me, I'll fight. I go, except that guy. <laughs> I remember pointing down at Jose going, I don't want to fight him, you know. <laughs> and I think more than anything is we haven't, the, the talent that's in the UFC right now is great. And, but like Conor McGregor, I, it's amazing the following that this guy has so fast. And it's absolutely insane. What that tells me is we need to get out there. The UFC needs to partner with somebody like a Cage Warriors, which is perfect. A 1FC, which is doing a beautiful thing. Instead of buying, but get, see what the rest of the world has to offer. You know, UFC, they, they you know, you have besides your Brazilians, you get some Japanese yeah. fighters, but what I'm starting to see, having been in there with that 1FC, the Malaysian, you know, the Philippines, over here in Europe, I mean, I'm in the UK, I'm seeing the Russian fight. Man, the talent pool is, is massive. It's huge. And um, it'd be real cool to see. So we don't, to be honest, we don't know the stars. Johnny Bones Jones yeah. is amazing. You can't top somebody like that, you know what I mean? And um, outside of that, but I, 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 you know what? I do have to say one. Man, TJ Dillashaw. I have to say, that's how you take a belt, my friend. That is, that that's, damn. Dwayne Ludwig, unbelievable props. Obviously, Team Alpha Male, amazing. But Dillashaw, I stood there afterwards. I'm like, hey, for what it's worth. Because, see, I got social anxiety, so I don't like, I feel like I'm bugging people. I don't talk to people, you know. And uh, for what it's worth. Hands down, probably one of the most inspiring fights I've ever seen in my life. And the reason why I say that is the level, the pace. He didn't take Burrell lightly. He didn't take that belt as a joke. He wanted it. He moved and he busted his ass. And you could tell every moment of that fight that he trained extremely hard for that fight. And it was one of those things, his movement, his hands, Probably one of the most impressive victories I've seen, period, let alone TJ, yeah, but I mean, in, in, just in the fighting realm on how to beat somebody, how to pay attention, how to listen to your coach, how to be in shape, and how to take that damn title. TJ Dillashaw, that's probably the greatest, that's the greatest thing I've seen. I'm still, I mean, I'm blown away by it. It was amazing. You, you mentioned again that you're looking around, you've been around Europe, you look and see, there's a rumor, I don't know if it's true, but one of our local fighters, Danny Mitchell, met you on a, has, has met you on some European shows, and he attributes his call-up to the UFC to meeting you. Could, did, did, do you know anything about that, or is that just rumor that we've heard? No, I mean, it might be rumor, no. I mean, 
they're going to take the claim that they have. But, you know, again, if I don't know if it would be because of me, you know, maybe, but... Yeah, it certainly was attributed to, 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 to you, and, and, and we thank well, you for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm appreciative, you know, I guess, as long as it's a good thing. You know? <laughs> hey, good you thing. son of a baby, I <laughs> dumb it. Yeah, no, it's, I'm glad, you know, because one thing I've always, I like to think I and I always pride myself on is I do, I do know talent, you know, and I do know fighting styles, and I do know great fighters, good fighters, and it's not, it's so little. Like, I still remember back in the day, straight teary-eyed, watching Robbie Lawler do what he does, man. It was, the kid was, oh my goodness. And now to see him back in that mold and what he did to Ellenberger, that's just, that's the Bob. I, that, or Robbie, sorry. The Bob, but, you know what I mean? It's, guys like that, it's just impressive to see. He's impressive to see, and it's, you know, I think so. Hey, best of luck. And Mitchell, thank you. I don't know. Ever be so humble, I have no idea. And, well, what do you mean? You know, a lot of people say that UK MMA is still, you know, five or six years behind the behind state. What? Well, behind the states of yeah, Canada. Behind state. what? That's yeah. why I said. Here's why. The UFC is global. Okay? UFC is a monster. That's a brand. That's one show. If, if you guys are five years behind US in MMA... Oh dear God, we're in trouble because you shouldn't have a show of this quality because outside of the RFA, I love their building. There are some shows over there, but MMA as a whole, not doing very well. I mean, anywhere, the amateur section. This show right here, Cage Boy, has got to be, it's one of the biggest, one of the premier fighting organizations across the globe, period. And it's not because I'm here right now, it's a it's fact. <laughs> I called him today. I just wanted to come. I want to come be a part of. It. I want to get over the. I'll come, you know, come across the pond. I just want to check this out. May I? Obviously, with one FC bringing back where Pride and Shudo left off, we have to have that. That's a beautiful thing to have. UFC, yes, is a monster. Oh, they're they're awesome. But MMA, there's no way these guys are five years behind MMA. It, it's impossible because MMA is it's not as big as everybody thinks the UFC is massive that's yeah. stop confusing the two when people stop coming here's when I here's this so far nobody in London has said to me hey do you do that UFC fighting so if you guys are five years behind us I get every day you, you fight UFC yeah <laughs> I, I fight UFC <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point, I suppose. Look, Jen, you are here, and, you know, is this a, is this kind of a one-time relationship with Cage Wars, or is this something that maybe we can expect a little more often? I'm nervous, actually. This is my trial. I'm on a trial right now. It's like coming in and, you know, being a part of the booth. I told Graham, you know, I'd love, I, I'd love it. I, I want to be able to travel. I'd love to get go to places I've never been meet fighters that I would normally never meet and so no I'm just here on a straight child basis it's like come on out we'll throw you up here we'll just we'll, we'll see we'll see if you get to be part of the cage warrior family so I'm, I'm hoping because I would love to but Jens I appreciate you spending 20 minutes chatting with us before we let you go though mate is there anybody that you'd like to give a shout out to or anybody you'd like to say thanks or sp sponsors that continue to support you well you know the big ones is a, a, a monster that I want everybody to start that would it's going to help out everyone fightmatch.com so www.fightmatch.com fight what they're doing is something that I jumped on board to help as fast as I can is you're out you're traveling you want a gym you want, there's a gym you can look it up on fight match you need sparring partners you want to go train at a different gym you're in a different town get that one centralized hub that one area where promoters fighters trainers cut men everybody coaches can all join together and they can just have that thing the old MMA underground I know they're still there this would be like the Facebook version of that and um, so to me have that be that one hub so fightmatch.com always you know I mean check that out because it doesn't cost anything and it's a place for all of us to build and centralize what we need to do 
Jens, again, it's been a pleasure meeting you. I could chat for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, for hours. So uh, thank you so much for your time, and hopefully you're back here again. We'll be able to follow we'll up. find out. Yell at Graham. Yell, Yell at Graham. We'll do that. Boy, sort it out. There you go. Let's I got go. it. I got it. Jens, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you guys.